doing a habitat day here on my property. Um, did really three things. Uh, some trees I totally cut down. Other trees I hinge cut it. You can see some behind me. Uh, and then some trees that were totally cut down uh, will grow back and it depends on how how you cut them down. Uh, right here is one example. It's about a foot, foot and a half off the ground. And I used the method and, and I kind of stumbled across this. I've been doing it and I realized the trees would sprout back and grow shoots off of them, which makes, there's one here, which makes great browse for deer. So let's first talk about what's called the coppicing method. Uh, it's nothing that I created. It comes out of Europe from the research that I did. Uh, because the populations were so high and the population densities are greater in, in early uh, Europe, particularly in the medieval times, uh, we had to, uh, well they had to cut trees down obviously for firewood, for building, and there weren't a lot of trees left. So they started managing their woods and calling them coppicing woods. And what would happen is if you cut a tree down about six inches, between six inches and uh, 18 inches off the ground, and you leave that, that stump, a lot of trees, you will learn, will, will grow back shoots, and you keep letting those shoots grow back. And after a certain period of time, you have a lot more wood to harvest off of that same stump for firewood and whatever the case may be, usually firewood. And uh, well, for habitat management for deer, you want a lot of woody browse. And this, this is an elm tree. And there are several shoots. I'll, I'll zoom in on it in a moment here. Uh, but the deer can browse it and it allows them to uh, bed in certain areas where, where uh, otherwise they wouldn't necessarily have browse if you cut everything down and, and it's totally level with the ground and, or whatnot. But uh, behind me over here, I, I did some hinge cuts as well to try to keep uh, uh, a zone around this area where, where the deer usually bed. So it screens them off of the area of this house up here. It's just 50 hard right here at the house. And it gives them a place where they could you know, not be bothered and won't see the house and won't, won't interfere and it kind of gives them uh, security and makes them feel more comfortable while they're bedding in this area. But I also did some hinge cuts, and there's a hinge cut behind me here just to get the tree down so I can have light in here and I'll show you my food plot. I needed to get more light in here. So uh, hinge cuts and totally cutting down the tree. There are logs behind me as well and I'll, I'll, I'll move the camera around and uh, so you can see the different things here uh, in, in a second. So first is the coppicing. Okay, you can see the stump right here and then the shoot to come off of it. Okay, good for deer browse. And I've done this throughout different parts of my property here. Some of them need cut again. But also, there's the hinge cuts. Right there, and that's more or less a hinge cut to get, I didn't want to cut it up to save time to open up the area for light to come in on the food plot here, okay? And I had to take that tree out, and I've got a pretty big stack of wood here. But, I've opened this up to allow more sunlight to get in and we're later in the day here I think it's two o'clock or so okay the sun's coming in pretty good it moved but this is only March so it's gonna be higher in the sky and it'll come in pretty good particularly in the fall I don't plant this in the spring uh, it's planted as a fall food plot and I opened this up this year. I'm trying to create a continuous movement line for the deer to stay inside my property. 
it's only 12 acres. That was a hinge cut right here. But this tree, unfortunately, is dead and fell down in the wind and busted the hinge cut. We'll take a little walk here. Some of these trees, as I said, I cut totally down and some I hinge. And you can see a series of hinge cuts here. One, two, three. Then I took this tree totally down. It got snagged up in that big walnut tree and eventually the wind blew it down and I cut some of it up right there. But three things to consider when you're doing some habitat management for browse. You've got your typical hinge cut and you'll get growth off of this. The light's going to come in. You can see how that's open to the sky now. Sunrise over here and it'll come across in the day. You get enough sunlight in here to allow this woody regeneration off of this trunk and there. But this tree is about two feet off the ground and I'm going to get a lot of shoots out of here. And they'll grow and they'll have browse along this path so they'll have browse and then this is going to be planted in winter rye come fall you see how it turns around here so lead the deer to where you want them to be uh, you have this area that's going to be planted it's like a C and it goes way back about 200 yards that way and it goes through the center of my property and hooks around going north then hooks and goes west and this one if you're coming this way south turns to the west goes back out that way so coppicing method hinge cut method help create more brows and these nice open areas steering deer to where you'd like them to be.